Good morning or good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to welcome you all to the third episode of our Capture 3D webinar series. Today, we're going to discuss using 3D metrology technology to drive innovation in the automotive industry. Um, just a quick intro, my name is Sonia Jones and I'll be your host for today's webinar. First off, um, we'd like to thank you so much for taking the time out of your day and joining us on our one hour webinar. We'll have a live Q&A session at the end of our presentation today. As mentioned earlier, today's webinar is our third topic in our webinar series. And here's a list of the other applications that we'll be covering in the following months. We normally host a webinar once a month or so. And if any of these future webinars interest you, please make sure to check out our social media where we'll be posting updates on them. I believe uh, many of you are already familiar with our 3D scanning technology or the lineup of our systems, uh, but I did want to make a quick note that we just launched a new ATOS Q scanner. This is a very portable, compact, and high resolution scanner for small to medium sized parts. Uh, we actually had a virtual launch event last month and introduced the ATOS Q and made the event recording available. And it's a pretty short video. And if anyone is interested in checking it out, please reach out to us and we'll share the link with you. If you have any questions for our speakers during the presentation, please leave them in the chat below and we'll address them during our Q&A at the end. Please make sure to direct your questions to all participants so everyone, including the host and speakers, can see your comments or questions. When all attendees are selected, it's directed to the audience only, so we won't be able to see your chat. We appreciate you all for tuning in today and to make things a bit more fun. Uh, we are going to ask three questions after the presentation, and they will be based on our webinar content. So the first one to get the answers right to each question will win $25 e-gift card. You'll have an option to choose from Amazon gift card or Uber Eats to get yourself a nice lunch. Uh, we'll email the gift card of your choice right after the webinar to our three winners. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce your panels for today's webinar. I'm Sonia, your host for the event, and I'm an event manager at Capture 3D. I've been with the company for four years and I'm based out of our California office. As for the speakers, we have Steve DeRamer, who is our sales engineer, and he's been with Capture 3D for 10 years. We also have Skylar, not Schuler, who is our application engineer, and he's been with us for four years now. Both of our speakers are based out of the Michigan office, which is our largest facility. All right, so thanks again, everyone, for joining us today, and we are really, really excited to be here with you. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Steve. Thanks, Sonia, and thanks to all who have joined us today to learn more about the impact that GOMS optical scanning technology is making on the automotive industry. We hope to provide an insightful experience for each of you today by looking at the automotive industry through the lens of quality. We will be discussing trends within the industry and be answering the questions, what is quality? Why is it so important? And how does the ATOS 3D scanning technology fit into the automotive applications and help to drive innovation? Along the way, we will be showcasing some of the latest innovations within GOM software that aid in the evaluation of the quality of a vehicle throughout both its development and production life cycles. Toward the end of today's webinar, we will host a live Q&A session to answer any questions that come up along the way. With that, let's go ahead and get started. To begin, let's provide a quick snapshot into our company with a few quick facts about Capture 3D. Capture 3D is the exclusive US partner for GOMS 3D optical scanning solutions and has been spanning the past 22 years. Our family at Capture 3D is growing at an incredible rate as we are just shy of 100 team members today, nearly double from our account just three years ago. We are solely focused on the GOM technology and software, which allows us to provide the highest quality of support and expertise to our customers. Our partner GOM is based in Braunschweig, Germany, and is the leader in the optical metrology field. GOM was privately held up until May of 2019 when it was acquired by Zeiss. 
Both Capture 3D and GOM are excited to be a part of the Zeiss brand and to continue to lead the industry in cutting edge 3D scanning technology and automation. We often get asked about which companies are currently using our technology, along with how many systems do they have. This slide provides a quick reference list of only some of our customers specific to the automotive industry. As I'm sure you've noticed, there are a lot of familiar names there comprised of both OEMs and suppliers. GOM's optical scanning technology has truly become the industry standard for those who are pursuing accurate, reliable, and informative data upon which to make decisions and improve quality. Let's quickly take a step back to look at the automotive industry in the U.S. as a whole in order to understand its significant impact on our economy. It's interesting to know that the U.S. represents the second largest automotive market in the world, where over 17 million vehicles were sold in 2019. An amazing 4.5% of all jobs in the U.S. are in some way supported by the auto industry, which is driven by the average person buying 9.4 cars in their lifetime. So in other words, the United States automotive industry is an absolutely critical component of economic growth with extensive interconnections across the industrial and cultural fabric of the U.S. Here we have a few more interesting metrics about modern cars and their development. An automobile purchased today is the product of years of R&D and investments. Typically, it takes five years or more for a technology or a new model vehicle to go from design to testing and from production to sale. Today's high-tech automobiles are comprised of an amazing 30,000 individual parts, all performing specialized functions in carefully specified ways. It's almost mind-boggling to think how many man hours are spent across so many people and the resulting cost of that in the development of a modern car. Also of note is the level of innovation and development that regularly takes place within the automotive industry. Between three and 5% of all US patents granted in a given year fall within the automotive realm, making the industry a major contributor to technological advancement within our country. In fact, the amount that the automakers annually spend globally on R&D is almost six times that of the aerospace and defense industry. This innovation within the automotive industry is reflected in so many different areas, including things like aerodynamic styling, fuel efficiency, safety, infotainment, performance, comfort, and future enhancements like autonomous driving and electric powertrains. It's truly amazing to step back and realize what we consumers expect from our cars today. They need to transport us safely, look good, and be fun to drive. They have to entertain us, navigate us, sense the presence of other cars around us, have things like internet connectivity and satellite radio, and have self-monitoring sensors to tell us when something goes wrong. And they have to be able to do all of these things problem-free for many years through hot and cold seasonal weather extremes, over hundreds of thousands of driven miles for what we consumers deem as a fair price, with the car makers all the while trying to differentiate themselves from the competition. No wonder R&D spending within the automotive industry is so substantial. Now let's look at what automotive quality actually means and how optical 3D scanning is helping to accomplish success in achieving all of this. When asked, what does vehicle quality mean? Most consumers would likely respond with topics like fit and finish, durability, and safety. These attributes relate to how well the car fits together, how long it takes for components to begin to have problems or simply wear out, and how well the car will protect the occupant in a crash. However, there's more to vehicle quality than just these characteristics. There is also perceived quality, which refers to the impression of quality that customers acknowledge via the look, the touch, and the feel of the car. For example, in a showroom, the customer would first take a glance around the car, then open the door, sit on the seat, and check the quality of the materials and details. They might notice the sound that's made when the doors are closed and things like the craftsmanship of the stitching and whether there's either a cheap or solid feel to the buttons when changing the temperature. Almost all of these characteristics rely upon dimensional control and quality of the individual components. In a recent interview with a body construction manager at one of the domestic car manufacturers, the question was asked, what is the justification to invest on dimensional inspection equipment such as an ATOS scan box? The answer was centered around dimensional control being vital during the assembly process. He responded with, if your assembly process starts off with a dimensionally poor body in white, and then you begin to hang doors and a hood on it, 
In the end, things like the rubber seals may not function properly, which could result in water finding its way in or increased wind noise. This snowball effect can cause rework at the end of the line and depending upon severity could have very costly implications such as a recall. All of these quality characteristics, both measurable and perceived, come together in an industry report card known as an Initial Quality Study, or IQS for short. This study attempts to rate each manufacturer by how they score in many different areas related to quality. The IQS tends to provide insight and influence into the buying process that consumers make. The most prominent IQS within the automotive community is published annually by J.D. Power & Associates. This study is based upon a survey that's sent to new car owners at the point of 90 days of ownership. This survey examines over 200 items that are grouped into nine categories as listed here. Results are given in terms of the number of problems per 100 vehicles with the car companies being ranked accordingly. As with most consumer products, the perception of a product being of high quality only helps to attract sales, resulting in increased market share. Wrapping up our discussion about the complexity of today's cars, defining what quality means within the automotive realm, and why quality is so important when producing cars, let's review several noteworthy considerations. It's important to realize that there are costs associated with producing both poor and good quality products. Of course, when producing poor products, there are internal failure costs such as increased scrap, rework, redesigns, etc. Plus, there are the external costs of failure, such as complaints, warranty claims, recalls, and poor customer impression. All of these quality failures involve indirect costs, but equate to significant dollars and cents. On the other hand, while it requires investment to produce a product of high quality, the return on investment is easily justifiable due to the same reasons. While quality requires cost to implement, it also pays huge dividends in the end. In the words of one of my fellow Capture 3D colleagues, it's better to be famous for quality than infamous for lack thereof. So as we all know, industry relies upon measurement technology to gain confidence that quality requirements are being met. We would like to take a moment to share some information related to trends that are happening within the metrology industry. We have just a few graphs to share which describe the trends that are underway within the industry. Over here, you can see that the global 3D scanning market size has increased by 420% over just the past seven years. The industry has seen a rather large increase in adoption of the stationary 3D scanners rather than the handheld scanners. This graph shows that there has been an increase in 3D scanning across all industries or applications. Among all categories, the automotive industry has adopted 3D scanning the most. Data is at the forefront of modern automotive manufacturing and is what is driving the industry today. 3D scanning and ATOS can help your company by providing the highest quality, most accurate data, no matter the application. I wanted to give you an idea of all of the configurations that we offer here at Capture 3D. Our solutions offer significant flexibility from portable and manual to fully automated solutions. Systems can be upgraded from manual to automated, providing a nice growth path for companies looking to break into structured light scanning, but aren't ready just yet for a fully automated solution like a scan box. Early automotive adoption of optical scanning technology in the U.S. began primarily within the stamping process. In fact, one of the earliest system orders for the ATO systems in the U.S. came from Ford Motor Company with their tool and die group. However, the use of the technology has grown significantly and evolved. Today, the ATO scanning technology has been implemented in virtually every stage of the development cycle of a vehicle. The full field geometry acquired by 3D scanning provides the data basis to inspect forms and tools, castings, plastic and sheet metal parts, as well as assemblies and complete car bodies. But that's not all. During the design stage of vehicle development, the ATO system is used to digitize the handmade 3D clay models created in the studio. This scan data is then used as reference to derive the 3D CAD data that will be used for downstream processes, such as testing and production. Within the prototyping and development phase, the ATO system can be used for competitive analysis of other car makers' products, 
or to scan unused space in an engine compartment so that new components can be designed to fit within the available volumetric real estate without interfering with other parts. During the tool making and tryout stage of vehicle development, ATOS is commonly used to scan molds and dies to ensure that they've been cut correctly from the CAD upon which they were based. Parts created during the tryout runs can be, then be scanned and compared to their nominal shape to confirm that the designed in metal spring back performed as it should. Once the tooling and stamping or molding processes have been dialed in, ATOS helps by scanning the first article parts that are produced to verify that they were created within acceptable tolerances. If not, fine adjustments can be made to the tooling process after which parts are again produced and evaluated for conformance. Within the production cycle process, parts are sampled regularly after being produced and statistical process control evaluates dimensional trends within the data to identify when non-conforming parts are produced. ATOS scan boxes are commonly used within the assembly process to inspect things like hems and trims, panel fit, mounting hole locations, and more. ATOS systems are typically used during the final assessment of a production vehicle to measure things like flush and gap, the presence of defects, and character lines. And of course, all aftermarket products can be measured with ATOS for both design and conformance purposes. So in short, no matter which stage in the automotive development process that you're involved in, our technology and team are here to help. While there are a great number of benefits using the ATOS technology, we wanted to highlight a few for you. Those customers who have chosen to adopt our technology have seen benefits such as reduced iteration, faster resolution of quality concerns, contributing to a faster time to market, all of which only help to provide a faster return on investment. Whenever a game-changing technology is introduced, it's almost always directly compared to both the established approach as well as other competitive products on the market. We thought it would be relevant to share a couple of customer-produced examples of how GOMS optical technology has performed in benchmark comparisons. Our first analysis was prepared by the sports car manufacturer Lamborghini, who presented their findings at one of GOMS semi-annual conferences in Braunschweig. This benchmark example was performed a few years ago and pitted the ATOS system against an articulated arm system in a competition where the same items were scanned with both systems. These items ranged from individual parts to assemblies and fully assembled cars. The key metric that was being measured in this case was the time it took to complete the various scan tasks so that a clear comparison could be created. They found that the articulated arm system didn't have the capability to perform some types of scan scenarios and those that it could perform did take notably longer to complete than the ATOS. In the end, the ATOS system completed the scan tasks at a 60% higher rate than those of the ARM-based system. We have another example from the automotive industry, this time prepared by our friends at Brembo Racing. The evaluation was done between CMM and ATOS simultaneously with associated hours being recorded along the way. The scan parts in this example included different styles of brake calipers, carbon-carbon parts, and titanium disc bells. They performed a comprehensive time study that looked at their measurement activities over one year of time. Brembo recorded the number of hours spent measuring and multiplied it by the quantities of various parts measured within that time. In the end, the tally shown here was derived, showing ATOS measurement achieving an overall 77% time reduction compared to the CMM. The ATOS process can be broken down into three easy steps. First, there is the data collection step where the shape of the part is realized into its digital twin. Next is the evaluation process where we import a CAD model and align the measured part into a common coordinate system. Once the two objects are aligned in space, we move on to step three where thorough inspection is visualized into your choice of a report format, which can consist of both graphical and numerical data outputs. The dimensional inspection reports coming from various types of systems vary greatly. Among the CMM community, the tabular output or tables of data is often the primary method of conveying the results of measurement. This of course requires both time and expertise for interpretation. Inside of the ATOS software, however, 
Not only can we mimic the report styles you might be used to, but we can give you the ability to visualize the results in the 3D world, which in turn makes the results that much easier to understand. Professional versions of GOMS inspection software contain a list of very powerful tools at your disposal, allowing complete dimensional evaluation of even the most complex parts. Listed here is a sample of some of the features that could apply to your automotive applications. GOM has focused on staying ahead of the competition by continuously innovating new capabilities while also enhancing existing functionalities year after year. At this point, we would like to take a dive into the software and focus on six functions that we see being notable to our audience today. Should any of the other software functions listed here be of specific interest to any of our viewers, please comment in the chat area so that we can connect separately in an online demonstration to further discuss your application. With that, let's have a look at some examples of where these highlighted software features are used in the automotive development and production cycle. Our first highlighted technical topic for today, deformation analysis, is most often used during the design and development phases. We will be showing a couple of examples in different areas where this function can become extremely useful. Our second topic to be demonstrated involves a groundbreaking concept that may be new to many of our viewers. In short, what if a software function could eliminate the need for traditional clamping fixtures? This function, virtual clamping, would likely be used during processes where parts are likely to be constrained when inspected. Next, we will be showcasing another virtual tool that can replace a physical process. Surface defect mapping, also known as virtual stoning, has a wide range of applications spanning from first article parts all the way through to final car assessment. Trend analysis, our fourth topic today, allows you to essentially travel through time and evaluate things like tool wear and process capability. We can look at a part made in January, compare it to a part made in subsequent weeks or months, and use the information to predict when non-conforming parts may begin to be produced. Digital assembly, a very powerful software capability, will also be covered as our fifth topic today. We will demonstrate the ability to digitally bring parts together for analysis before ever bringing them together physically. Finally, we will complete today's technical discussion by demonstrating the flush and gap function that GOM has developed for thorough analysis of neighboring panels. We will also see how well these parts fit together in their respective RPS or fixture-based alignment. This can be further enhanced by allowing the software to optimize the alignment and give us the adjustment information needed to achieve the optimal fit. While these are the areas that we currently see these functions being applied, they certainly are not limited strictly to these applications. So let's start with some deformation analysis. Skylar, can you begin to walk us through some ideas on how this function can be applied? Absolutely, Steve. For those that are not familiar with this tool, we're utilizing a combination of high resolution images, scale bars, and reference points to value or record center point locations of each target for evaluation. TriTop can be a very powerful tool to analyze how the position of targets change in each respective condition over time. This change can be caused by any number of things, including variables such as heat, the application of load or weight, the passage of time, variation in materials, or damage being incurred. Today, I've picked two different applications to showcase. So with that, why don't we move over to the software and see what type of information we can receive from TriTop. In this example, we have a glove compartment in its pre-installed state with targets being applied in regions or areas of the part we want to analyze once a variable has been applied. Our variable in this project will be the introduction of various amounts of weight inside the glove box. The results of this analysis will graphically convey just how much and in what direction changes occurred. Because we're measuring the center points of the targets that move with the part, we can extract the precise differences between the before and after conditions. We can easily visualize all of the high resolution images that were collected during all stages of the test. But let's focus on one of these images to begin our evaluation. What we're looking at here is a compartment with no additional weight being introduced, which will serve as our baseline to which subsequent measurements will be compared. There are four different test conditions in our example today with increasing amounts of weight. Between each stage, 
of this test, we added nine pounds of weight to the glove compartment. As I cycle through the timeline at the bottom of the screen, we can see the vector arrows changing in color and direction, indicating the amount of displacement. We can continue the evaluation and inspect the gap change along the top edge of the compartment throughout the different loads being applied. As we can see, when increasing the amount of weight added, the gap and position of the glove box door changes significantly. One more example I'd like to show is a study where the variable is change in temperature instead of weight. In this project, we have the front end of a Mercedes-Benz that was measured in a temperature-controlled chamber set at 20 degrees Celsius for our baseline measurement. The temperature inside the chamber was then increased to simulate a vehicle being left in the sun on a hot summer day. As we can see, the thermal expansion is not uniform throughout the entire fascia, and in some areas, changes seen up to 5 millimeters in difference. We always love finding new and interesting ways to utilize this function, and we are certainly open to discussing this topic further if any of our audience members have unique visions on how this can be applied. Where are we going from here, Steve? Well, Skyler, let's go on to our second topic for today, virtual clamping. As I posed the question earlier, what if a software function could eliminate the need for traditional clamping fixtures? Virtual clamping simulates the clamping of a part by collecting its shape in a free state and then applying the same constraints as would normally be applied by a clamping fixture. While this function is still very new, we believe this could have a major impact on the future of the way parts are manufactured and inspected. We would like to now show a new video explaining the concept and its application. Until now, unstable parts had to be painstakingly clamped before measuring them. GOM's new virtual clamping process reduces costs as you will no longer need specific fixtures. Instead, a universal pneumatic fixture is used in tandem with the GOM Inspect Suite's innovative algorithms. You can position the part free of tension as it briefly floats at the mounting points. The Artos scanner then produces a high-precision digital image of the sheet metal part in its free state by locating the pneumatic support points. You can swiftly and comfortably adjust the universal pneumatic fixture to accommodate a wide range of sheet metal and plastic parts. Measuring the entire surface is now very easy as none of its elements are hidden by the fixtures. Virtual clamping with a GOM Inspect Suite is a two-step process. First, an innovative algorithm compensates deflection from gravity and simulates the part's intended mounting position. Second, GOM Inspect virtually clamps the part in the specified positions. A full-field colour plot shows the deviation between measurement and CAD model. This method delivers exactly the same outcome as an expensive physical feature, but with much greater reproducibility and far less operator influence. Virtual clamping provides efficient measurements throughout a part's entire development process. Gone are the days of designing and manufacturing fixtures for various parts and process steps. As Steve mentioned before the video began, Virtual clamping mimics the process of using a traditional clamping fixture. We wanted to show you a real example where the virtual clamping process was performed on a stamped part. On the left side of the screen, we see the results of a part that was scanned in a clamping fixture. On the right, we're showing the results of a part scanned in free state with a pneumatic holding device that had the virtual clamping process applied to the resulting scan. As you can see, the two data sets are virtually identical, which shows a correlation between both processes. If you have specific questions about the process, please request more information in the chat. All right, Steve, what's topic number three? Topic number three is surface defect inspection, which is a really impressive software function that makes use of the high resolution accurate scan data coming from the ATO system. First, let's take a look at the motivation behind this function. 
Throughout most production processes, a percentage of parts will contain defects. These defects vary in magnitude, both large and small. The types of defects that are common for sheet metal include wrinkles, depressions, bulges, and folds. Historically, the inspection approach used to define and quantify these defects was a manual process. As with most manual operations, the results can be somewhat subjective and potentially destructive to the part being evaluated. Here we see an example of a sheet metal door with suspected defects. For those with us today that have never seen the traditional process of stoning in person, we want to provide some insight as to what our new software function is designed for. Here we see stones of different lengths being used by an inspector to help reveal any defects that are present. Note that the operator is rubbing the stone in a linear direction specific to the location of the suspected defect. As you can see, by disturbing the surface with the stone, both the depressions and bulges become glaringly obvious. The traditional manual method is time consuming and its detection accuracy is easily affected by the subjectivity, energy, and experience of the inspector. To overcome the shortcomings of manual inspection, virtual surface defect detection based on 3D data becomes advantageous. Shown here is a screenshot of actual scan data with arrows pointing to visible defects on a door. Using this new software function, we can essentially select the size of the stone along with the direction we would like to virtually push that stone over the surface and whether to look for dents, bulges, or both. Next, behind the scenes, the software is establishing the highest points in order to calculate depth and magnitude of the defects that are present. The same is automatically done for bulges. What if your part consists of non-flat, non-linear curved surfaces that potentially contain defects, such as the fender shown here? Now, in the current version of the GOM inspection software, the virtual surface defect mapping or virtual stoning function has the new capability to perform radial stoning following a curve. Up until this point, we have focused solely on the sheet metal applications for this function. Let's switch gears and show how it can also be applied to some of the plastic components of a vehicle. Sure thing, Steve. Here we have an actual data set measured with an ATO system. Notice the high detail definition reflected in the data, even including the graining or texturing pattern common to interior plastic components of the car. The first inspection I'd like to highlight is an overall surface deviation compared to the nominal CAD. Note that in this example, the color shading tells a story indicating that the panel is not formed correctly to the design shape. Using this approach does not reveal the micro level surface defects that may be present on the glove box door. Therefore, further analysis is required. With the goal being to locate any fine level of defect that is present on the door, we turn to the surface defect mapping function. In this case, the black line shown is the direction we will virtually stone. Initially, the defect map treats all of the graining or texturing as tiny defects. We can then ask the software to filter out those defects under a certain size, no longer factoring in the intentional texturing of the door surface. Once the filtering process is completed, our surface irregularities are much more easily observed. While some defects are not as severe as others, the color shading can be adjusted to isolate strictly depressions and bulges that could be considered problematic. With these results, we can begin to do some root cause analysis, looking closer at the most significant defect on the panel and taking a peek at the backside of the part in the picture in picture view we can see a molded in feature at the same location, providing some evidence of what is likely causing the bulge on the visible side of the door. To summarize the surface defect topic, the ATO software is an extremely flexible tool that can be used for not only comparing to CAD and looking at dimensional and form deviations, but can also be used to examine the part in much higher detail or at a micro level. The GOM approach is fast, thorough, repeatable, and fully traceable. We know that we've already thrown a lot of technical information at all of you today, and we'd like to thank you again for taking the time out of your day to be here with us. 
with that, Steve, let's introduce topic number four. Yeah, no problem, Skyler. Thus far, we have reviewed software features that focus on the evaluation of individual parts. Beginning with our next software feature in focus, trend analysis, we will start to look at software capabilities that can be applied to multiple parts. Looking at trends in a population of parts provides meaningful insight into the production process that is being used and variables that may affect the final part or parts being produced. Let's look at a quick overview of the options with trend analysis and why it may be useful. Trend analysis helps monitor manufacturing and production trends to detect and prevent possible issues. By looking at how a group of parts changes over time, things like tool wear and dimensional degradation can be estimated. This feature examines and reports the change in shape and morphing of geometry and is utilized to better understand manufacturing processes for a faster root cause analysis. With the software's parametric inspection functionality, these features can be applied to multiple data sets automatically. This allows for full field evaluation of several parts or stages within a single project and offers functionalities for determining statistical analysis values as listed here. As I mentioned before, we can look at a part made in January, compare it to a part made in subsequent weeks or months, and use this information to predict when non-conforming parts may begin to be produced. This trend analysis tool can be used in a wide array of applications, such as inspection reports with parts made using different tools, multiple cavities, or even parts made in different locations or produced on different shifts. Now that we have explained the concept, let's review some actual data in the software. Skyler, do you have that bearing cover data available? Yep, I have that one open and ready to show. The part we're looking at here is what is called a bearing cover, and this mounts to the bottom of a connecting rod. This is a multi-cavity tool, which will be interesting because it allows us to compare cavity to cavity, as well as multiple parts coming from the same cavity. Before we get into the analysis, let's just quickly look at the visual differences that can be observed in the different scans. Note the different stages here at the bottom of the screen, and as I cycle through these, we can see how the part changes slightly. If you look closely on the bottom left, you can see the cavity number that's been cast into this part. This is our indicator of which cavity we are looking at, and you'll notice a random sample size from each cavity was selected for evaluation. These differences become much more pronounced when we activate a color map, or a surface comparison to the CAD model. Again, as I step through each of these stages, we can see the visual part variation between each sample. We can even, if I zoom in closely here, see the manual flash removal process is not very consistent. Now, I'd like to highlight some of the creative ways of visualizing this data. First, and probably most common, is looking at the range, which will help identify chronic areas of deviation across the population of parts. Notice, if I cycle through the stages, nothing changes, as this color map is a composite of all the parts measured. Now, let us look at methods of reporting this information. I've taken the liberty of creating a sample report that contains some ideas of how these results can be visualized. Of course, a common starting point in a report like this is a title page containing project information. Just to mention, report pages in the GOM software are highly customizable with almost limitless options. The title page can be followed by a table of contents for easy navigation through the report. This page contains an image of the population of parts used for this study. While they all appear to be virtually identical, the following report pages will highlight just how different they are. Should hard number data be of interest, a tabular output like this is automatically created in GOM software and is fully customizable. For quick reference, we can include a snapshot directly from the part print showing all GDNT features to be inspected along with the respective tolerances. This drawing also includes the datums to properly align this part. What we see here is the calculation of datum features across all parts is very repeatable, giving us confidence in the dimensional results. 
Here we see the color map we looked at earlier, which now contains individual point locations that are measured on each part. We have selected nice trending labels to convey the variation from part to part. These types of labels can be used across different drawing requirements such as GD&T like true position, surface profile, uh, as well as linear dimensions like uh, lengths and diameters, or even as deviation to a section cut. This sums up our review on the trend analysis function. As always, if you'd like to explore this topic further, please let us know. I believe we're getting down to our last few topics. Um, Steve, isn't Digital Assembly next? Yes, Skylar, you are correct. We are now going to move on to the topics of Digital Assembly and Flush and Gap. In the previous topic, we discussed a process of measuring multiple parts and analyzing them individually. Our next topic will also involve measuring multiple parts, but this time we will be looking at how these parts interact with each other in an assembled state. I'd like you to envision for a moment being a body quality manager at a major car company who relies on parts being manufactured at various locations around the country. In a normal scenario, that body manager would be dependent on logistical limitations and transit time before the various parts could be physically brought together and inspected as a whole. This scenario would obviously be exposed to delays and possible iteration loops in order to dial in and address any fitment issues that are present. Sounds like a headache, doesn't it? Is there anyone living this scenario now? How could this be improved? Digital assembly is the solution to a process improvement when dealing with various part vendors and parts being produced at various locations. Prior to the actual physical assembly, the measured parts can be aligned together digitally. Information on flush and gap or functional dimensions can be evaluated at an early stage. Measuring results deriving from different departments or even from different suppliers can be evaluated centrally. This way, a car body can be analyzed irrespectively of the Meisterbach or cubing methods. It allows manufacturers to remotely assemble parts and components, validating the design and simulating the finished product before incurring costs. What is being characterized on this map are parts being produced and measured at various locations in all four corners of the country, with the data being transmitted to one centralized location for dimensional analysis. Just to be clear, we are talking about bringing data together rather than physical parts. It takes minutes to transfer data to a file share system, but days to transport sheet metal parts on a truck. This development is invaluable for the modern automotive manufacturing industry, which relies on a global network of remote OEMs and suppliers to collect various parts and components to fulfill design requirements. These manufactured components must fit upon assembly, otherwise profitability is significantly impacted by costly rework, delays, and wasted production time. Now I would like to give the floor over to Skylar, who will show us how this functionality looks inside of the ATOS software. Thanks, Steve. I believe this topic will be very interesting for many of our viewers. At this point, we are going to build our foundation that we will later elaborate on by using some of the more advanced features available to us because of GOM's digital assembly functionality. Let us start by explaining the concept of something called a part container inside of the GOM software. A part container is a place where all things related to a given part are stored. This includes the cab model, actual scan data, choice of various alignments, as well as all the inspection related to that part. As shown here, we've already established part containers for six components that make up the assembly we'll be analyzing today. As I activate the individual cab models, we can see all six parts in their respective car body alignment, which make up the overall assembly. The same is also done for the actual scan data. Note that each of the containers also includes at least one alignment. In case you're wondering, the software offers an infinite number of alignments, which can include things like fixture or feature-based alignments. The results shown here give an early snapshot of the graphic results for how the panels are fitting together. This, however, is nowhere near the limits of inspection that can be done with a digital assembly. At this point, I think we're already well past the analysis that can be done with probes and hand tools. 
Now that we have an understanding of how digital assembly looks inside of the ATO software, let's move over to the topic flush and gap for some more advanced inspection. Flush and gap inspection between assembled automotive doors and bodies is a critical factor in modeling a car's aerodynamic performance and in turn can determine things like its fuel efficiency. Measuring flush and gap on these parts can be difficult to physically inspect because of the unusual surface contours and nominally small gaps. Mechanical tools are almost impossible to use because of the flowing contours and the small to non-existent gaps. Manual tools like feeler gauges depend too much on the operator's individual abilities. Digital flush and gap makes this analysis possible, more accurate, and repeatable without needing manual work. This reduces the inspection time tremendously. Using Gohm's approach, based on data from an ATO system, this complex task is performed quickly and in a very repeatable manner. Let me use this graphic here to explain the idea of the next software demo. So what we see here is an assembly of panels brought together into a digital assembly using RPS alignments, with the colors being an indicator of how well they fit together. By using these results as a starting place, GOM software will go to work finding a way to improve or optimize the alignment based on the flush and gap results. How do we calculate the optimal fit based on the flush and gap results? And then what physical adjustment would be required to accomplish what the software is telling us in the real world? These questions are best answered using GOM's advanced flush and gap function. On the left side of the screen, we see an initial set of results for flush and gap that are based on the parts given RPS alignment. In other words, these parts have already been aligned using features that reside on the part and that are commonly identified on the parts drawing. The locations for inspection are typically provided by what's called a gap plan. These plans specify key locations on each panel to evaluate flush and gap. The area to pay attention to is the gap between the fender and the driver's side door. Based on the alignment required by drawing, we see that two of the specified areas for flush and gap inspection are out of tolerance by as much as a millimeter. What is unique about the GOM software is being able to use these results as alignment features. On the right side, I asked the software to include all of the flush and gap measurements for the fender to be factored into the optimization result. In the background, the software is calculating the optimal alignment, focusing on the results of the points called out in the gap plan. As a benefit of the panel optimization, the software provides easy to understand feedback on what adjustments would need to be made and in what direction the calculated gap to be realized in the physical part assembly. In other words, this graphic is telling us that if we move the upper and the lower mounting hole in Z upward about a half a millimeter, and inboard by just over a millimeter, our physical parts would reflect the optimal gap. For the last item today, I would like to give you a quick sneak peek into the future of the ATO software. When it comes to flush and gap inspection, you generally have two options inside of ATOS, the section-based or curve-based approach that we see above. Let's take a dive into the construction behind these topics. First, starting with the section-based approach, in the software version 2019, there were many elements that needed to be created, along with multiple measuring principles that need to be applied. All of this before having the software tell us the flush and gap results. GOM has now simplified this process significantly. To accomplish the same task in the 2020 version of software, the number of features to be constructed is streamlined and all of the additional construction is done automatically. This means we now only require as few as one point from the gap plan with one measuring principle, making this a task that can be completed in a couple of mouse clicks. This same thing will translate to the curve world. Same as before with the section-based approach, in the 2019 version of software, multiple elements and principles are required. Moving forward to the 2020 version, an entire gap can be inspected with simply one curve and one measuring principle. Should any of you be interested in receiving a sample inspection report that showcases all software features that we have covered during today's webinar, please drop us an email at info at capture3d.com. I hope you've enjoyed today's technical review of several highlighted software features. Our Q&A session is due to start shortly for any questions you may have. 
That's all from my side. Now let's head back to Steve for a summary. Thanks, Skyler. We started today's webinar by talking about automotive industry trends related to metrology, as well as the benefits of 3D scanning and reviewed the impact that GOM's metrology systems are making. We then demonstrated the latest innovations that GOM offers related to automotive digital engineering. As a quick refresher, we showed how GOM's TriTop system can be utilized to measure deformation through target movement once a variable has been applied, which in our examples were load and temperature. We walked through the process of virtual clamping where we showed that a part scanned in free state can be virtually clamped to achieve the same results as a physically clamped part. The topic of surface defect mapping was covered to mimic the manual stoning process on any type of material. We highlighted the trend analysis features that in the ATOS software allow us to look at a population of parts and how they are different with unique reporting capabilities. Digital assembly was showcased and we reviewed the concept of a part container in the ATOS software. Finally, we took a journey through the flush and gap function and its advantages, including panel fit optimization, along with a sneak peek of GOM's streamlined workflows in the new 2020 version of software. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank those who gave us the gift of their time today. We hope today's webinar was beneficial, fun, and informative. Now we will move on to our Q&A session. Sonia, the floor is yours. All right, let's move on to our Q&A session. And I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing so you can see our faces. And actually, now we are, we have, we are a little behind. It's 10.56 right now, where it's 1.56. Let's do a 10-minute Q&A. And we received tons of questions. So Steve and Sky. Are you guys ready? We are. Yes, we are. All right. Um, let me take, I don't see you. There you go. <laughs> All right. So I see the first question is how many parts? Oh, you know what? I'm so sorry. Like that's, <laughs> that's the uh, cute question. You know what? <laughs> I know. Crystal asked, how much is the ATA system? Okay, well, uh, I can address that. Uh, the ATO system, uh, we offer many different models of the ATO system, both manual and automated uh, versions. So uh, the price point is going to start in the $30,000 range and kind of go up from there based upon functionality, including resolution, levels of software, and whether or not the system is automated. Got it. Thank you. And there's another question from uh, Eric. Alan said, how big of a part can you scan? I guess I'll handle that one. Um, so really we're, we're not limited. Um, if, we, if we combo that with one of our, our sister products, which would be the tri-top system or a photogrammetry system, um, we can measure very large scale. We've done full-size aircrafts, obviously full-size cars, as you saw today. Um, and then we go all the way down to things like the size of a microchip. And all that does is we, you know, we change out our field of view or our measurement volume, depending on the project, depending on the part, and we can accomplish anything from small to large. Awesome. All right. So the, the, another question that I see is from Aaron Sorosi. I actually see that he is our winner. <laughs> The ARIA contest, and he asked, does the universal pneumatic inspection system exist as part of ATOS current product line? Okay, yeah, I, I'll take that one as well. Um, kind of an interesting question, I guess, depends on that, how that's being asked. Um, I'll try to answer both ways here. Um, the pneumatic clamping device is something, it's a product that is offered currently. It's something that you can purchase. Um, and then additionally, if that, if that question is for the software side, uh, virtual clamping is an additional module inside of the ATOS professional software. So it is an addition, uh, but those are both currently things that are offered by Capture 3D. Right. Thank you. Hope that answered your question, Aaron. Another one from another Eric. He's asked, is virtual clamping included in the free version of GOM Inspect or do you need a professional license? I'll, uh, I'll take that one as well. Um, the actual function of performing virtual clamping and doing that evaluation, that is something that is done in the professional license or the professional version of the software. Um, mm -hmm. However, if it's already done, the free version is a great, great thing for anybody else on your team to view any of the inspection that's been done. 
So initially, yes, you need a professional license to perform that inspection, but it can be shared, viewed, do your own additional inspection in the free version. And I'll add to that, that the virtual clamping function is a software add-on. It's a module to the uh, primary professional version of software. Okay, thank you. So another one next up is my, Michael asked, my shop is very dirty and dusty. Will that be any issue for the ATOS systems? Uh, that's a good question. Um, basically, uh, you know, as with any measurement system, um, you know, a, a temperature uh, stable environment that's very clean is ideal. Uh, all, all measurement systems tend to work well in that scenario. Uh, the ATOS system, uh, of course, works well in that scenario as well, but we don't necessarily require that. Our systems are shop hardened. They're designed to be on a shop floor. And I can personally attest that we've got many customers that have these systems in very non-ideal environments. Thank you. Um, Theron Short asked, for the surface defect inspection, what's the smallest defect that can be detected consistently? For example, depth of depression minimum. Does that make sense? It does make sense. Uh, and that's a great question. Um, really, it's we're, we're kind of still evaluating that. Um, we, we've seen very large defects. We've seen uh, low, like low micron range defects that are also being picked up with the surface defect map function. Um, and that, that again is going to depend on the field of view we use. Uh, if we're going to use a small field of view, we're going to pick up smaller defects. Larger field of view obviously may wash a few of those out, but it depends on the size of the defect. Um, and honestly, a, a perfect thing for us to do would be a proof of concept on that to determine if if uh, the size defects you're looking at or something we can capture for you. Okay, great. Speaking of defect and micron level, you know, uh, Glenn actually asked two questions. The first one is, is ATOS NIST traceable, ah. NIST? Yes. Uh, okay, so the each of the ATOS systems, when they're delivered with their, you know, uh, fields of view or measurement volumes, lens sets, uh, each of those is delivered along with a, a certificate that uh, states that the system has undergone a, a thorough, what we call a VDI certification test. And the VDI artifact that's used for that certification is fully NIST traceable. And the information related to what gauge and so on, who the source was, it's all provided on the certs themselves. Great, thank you. Um, one, other, one other question that Glenn had was in general, what's the resolution and accuracy of ATOS? For example, is it capable down to the micron level? Yeah, um, great, another great question. Lots of great questions. Um, mm -hmm. the, answer, the short answer is yes. Uh, it, it, again, that's gonna depend on our field of view, our measurement level. Uh, so we do have nice smaller field of views that are great, very high accuracy, and we can get down to the single micron level, yes. Okay, great. So Jonathan Warner, we did not forget about you. So he asked actually multiple questions. So I'm just bundling it and living into the a loss. But I'm gonna go ahead and um, ask Warren's Warren James question. He's like, I'm running a 60 to 35 system. How do you eliminate bleed through on scans? Uh, I guess we're a little unclear there. Um Maybe that's something we should follow up on, uh, get a little more clarity on that question. Okay, um, we can do that. Okay. Another, okay, so let me start with Jonathan's question. So how fast, how fast can a typical stamp part be scanned coming off the press? Consider a door uh, outer for your answer. Is it fast enough to do every fourth part, every 12th part? Uh, another great question. Um, I guess there, there's a few variables that would come into play there, and really it's going to depend on what you're inspecting, um, how thorough of an evaluation you're trying to do on each of those parts coming down the line, um, mm -hmm. and then really depending on how much time are you giving us for that measurement. Uh, again, this is another perfect thing for a proof of concept. Uh, maybe okay. talk about what you're looking to evaluate and see if we can help you further. I, I will say, uh, I'll just add one thing on that. Uh, we have done some testing for customers on door outers, just simply scanning the real estate of the door itself. And we can cover the real estate in a matter of four to five individual shots of data. Each of those shots only takes a few seconds. So when you factor in things like robot moves and so on, it's a pretty quick process to scan a door outer. 
Absolutely. Nice. <laughs> so another one he asked, do you have any customer examples for the virtual stoning that can be shared? I'm sure we could probably come up with something. Um, mm -hmm. As I mentioned in the presentation, if we, we are also giving out a sample report, if anybody's interested, that'll include mm -hmm. the project that we covered in the demo as well. Um, if that works for you, that's, that's definitely something shareable. We can also share the project. Um, and then we can look into any of the other things that we might have here from customer side and, and see what we can come up with. Definitely something we can follow up on. Okay, sounds good. Another one uh, that Jonathan asked for virtual fixturing, the effect of gravity is mentioned be removed. My question is why would you want to want to virtually do that since the measurement was taken with gravity? Is that something we can follow up or is that too much to answer? Because we have uh, more. Definitely questions. something we can follow up for more details, but just to give you just a, a quick, nice answer on that is since we're going to measure that part in the state that it wasn't designed or how it's going to end up in the assembled vehicle. In this case, it was a door ring. Um, we, we take the gravity out because it's not correct gravity, and then we virtually add gravity back in in the correct state. So that is all being done virtually, again, making it so just so we don't have to design a fixture that would hold that part in its design state. Um, but again, if if there's any if there's any more clarity that needs to be had there, absolutely something we can follow up on. Okay, sounds great. So I'm gonna take last three questions. Um, the last one, I like the third one, I guess first one being the uh, Jonathan's for stamp part. What's the accuracy of the scan when measuring the whole edge? Okay, edge the whole edge, like a mm -hmm. whole edge or the whole edge. Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> probably, so, probably the hole. Yeah, I would assume that's going to be a hole there. Um, you know, it's, again, that's something that's going to depend on a measuring body. Um, typically, what we use for all things sheet metal would be a 700 measuring volume. Um, and generally, for a whole location, you you know, you can expect, I would say, low double digit microns, yep. mid double digit microns. Maybe the 15 to 20 range yeah. right there. Okay. Thank you. And you, Matt asked, what are some of the data output types from your hardware systems? Are your hardware systems compatible with enough metric polyworks software? Good question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, either of us can answer yeah, that. Yeah. Um, uh, generally, the data outputs coming from our systems are going to be a polygon mesh format. If the intention is to take it and use it in something like a reverse engineering surfacing or model surface modeling um, software, uh, those formats would include things like STL or PLY file or uh, G3D file, That's any of those. Right. Yeah, um, so we can export it in, in a variety of different ways that would go into third party softwares. You agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. And then just to further that, if there's any other type of element that we want to bring out of our software specifically like Steve said, for reverse engineering purposes. We can export geometries as IGIS, uh, CSV, things like that. Basically anything that's gonna come out of ATOS imports well into any other software. Yep. Okay, thank you. You know what, I'm just gonna add one more question and then make it last two one questions. So Phil asked, what are the hardware requirements for virtual clamping? Do you need an automated system? I, I do. I don't think so for the answer for that. Obviously, we would love you to because it's a much quicker way to measure something. Um, but no, really what, what's required there is an FEA model of the part with all its material properties. Obviously, a scan of the part that we would take, whether that be manual or in an automated system. Um, and then the clamping points where, where you would clamp that part um, to, to be able to perform that. So I guess short answer, no, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't require an automated system. Got it. So there's actually like, okay, I'm, I'm adding to a lot more questions, but let's That's make fine. it. So there's a great question that I'm going to leave it for the last, as the last one, Clement asked, is the camera used in tri-top gum specific? If not, what specification must it have? Thanks. That's a great question. That's a technical question. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, yes, for tri-top, it's going to be a gum specific camera. 
The reason for that is there's very, very thorough testing that's done to those cameras. And what they're looking to do is make sure that CCD chip in the camera is extremely accurate. So that is something that is, is going to be want to be purchased from us um, for that reason. Thank you. And the last question is being that is the software standalone or does it have to be bundled with your scanner? This one came from Michael. Uh, the software can certainly be purchased as a standalone version. Um, there are three different levels of software that can be acquired. Um, the ATOS professional that actually runs a scanning system and collects data that comes delivered with a system. From there, we've got uh, the Goldman Spect Pro uh, version of the software that can be purchased as, as an accessory or add-on so that people could work at their desks uh, away from the system. Um, those can be purchased individually and used. And then there's the freeware uh, Goldman Spect that can be downloaded on any Windows-based computer uh, and allow you to perform ins uh, inspection and uh, view results that have been done in the primary software. Uh, it just doesn't have the parametric inspection functionality built in. Thank you. All right. I, are we looking at like 11 10 or 1 10 your time? So let's uh, end our QA session and we'd like to thank you all our participants who attended our webinar um, and took part in our little fun contest as well. And we'll, we're going to have some more exciting webinars to share with you soon. So thanks for tuning in and please look out for our emails or follow us up. Follow us are on our social media for more updates. All right. And thank you. I uh, hope everyone ha have a great rest of the day. Did you guys want to say anything? Thank you very much for everybody's time. <laughs> Great to appreciate it. All right. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. And then we're going to reach out to our winners. All right. Stay uh, online, please. Thank you and have a great day. Bye bye.